Hello VC, it's Daz from Jimmy the Saints channel. Um, this is episode 5 I believe of the Inheritance Collection. Um, for those of you that are new to the Inheritance Collection, um, I inherited my brother-in-law's record collection after he passed away earlier this year and I'm gradually working my way through it and showing all the records but there is some CD sprinkled in there as well. So as I say, it's been a little while since I did an update. Um, so episode five, let's crack on. So I've got, I've made notes. I'm trying to make it a bit more informative than just showing the records and the labels. So I've made some notes on this little lot. So first up, Ace and the album is called an Ace album. Now, Ace are a British rock band um, who enjoyed moderate success in the 1970s. They were formed in Sheffield in 1972. And their membership included Paul Carrick, who later went on to have success as the lead vocalist with Mike and the Mechanics. Um, Ace were best known for their hit single, um, How Long, which was uh, top 20, reached the top 20 in the UK, reached number three in the USA and Canada. Uh, this album was released in 1974 and it's on the Anchor label. It was a band that I hadn't heard of literally just because it was in the collection that I came across it but uh, I didn't even know that um, Paul Carrick had been in it but it's not a bad album so that was Ace and an Ace album next up we've got one that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. The Beach Boys, Keeping the Summer Alive. 1980 release on Caribou Records. As many of you are uh, Familiar American rock band formed in Hawthorne, California. The band drew on the music of jazz, sorry, a jazz based vocal, um, 1950s rock and roll and black R&B to create their unique sound. The original lineup was Brian Wilson, Dennis Wilson, Carl Wilson, Mike Love and Al Jardine. And that was the Beach Boys keeping the summer alive. I think I said this in the previous video, I, the only Beach Boys I'd had exposure to was the sort of the singles that you hear on the radio, but I'm finding that their albums are uh, not what I was expecting, shall we say. I'm actually enjoying them. 
Uh, that's the second one that, that I've come across in this collection. But um, yeah, not what I would expect from the Beach Boys, but enjoyable. Okay, next up. We've got Bob Dylan, Bringing It All Back Home. Now this album is also known as Subterranean Homesick Blues in some territories. Released in 1965. Uh, this one's a repressing on CBS. It's uh, Dylan's fifth studio album. Um, it's half electric and half acoustic. Um, and the album marked um, Dylan abandoning his protest songs of previous albums in favour of uh, more complex lyrics. The album reached number six on Billboard's pop album chart, the first of Dylan's albums to become to make sorry to make the US top ten, and it topped the UK charts later that spring. Subterranean Homesick Blues was Dylan's first single to chart in the US, peaking at number thirty-nine. Next up, The Cars with a self titled album, The Cars. Try and reduce that glare now. The Cars are an American new wave rock group from Boston, Massachusetts. They formed in 1976 and this was their debut album. This is a 1978 on Electra. This album contains three chart singles. Just what I needed. My best friend's girl and good times roll. And it remained in the charts for a hundred and thirty nine weeks. That's The Cars self-titled debut album, The Cars. Next up we have David Bowie. Scary Monsters and Super Creeps or as it is just known as Scary Mon Monsters. 1980 release and it was Bowie's 14th studio album. And this is on the RCA label. Now this album contains uh, Roy Bitten on piano. Um, as some of you will know he was a, or is a member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. But Roy Bitten plays piano on
I can't read my own writing here. On the tracks, Teenage Wildlife, Ashes to Ashes, Up the Hills Backwards, and also Robert Fripp plays lead guitar on the tracks Fashion, It's No Game, Scary Monsters, Kingdom Come, Up the Hill Backwards, and Teenage Wildlife. And it also has Pete Townsend playing guitar on the track Because You're Young. Um, the album peaked at number one in the UK and went platinum. So that's David Bowie, the Scary Monsters. Okay, next up we have The Doors 13 This was originally released in 1970 on the Electra label But this copy is a 1976 reissue The band The Doors actually took their name from an Aldous Huxley book by the title of The Doors of Perception. Let's say this is on the Electra label. This is the first compilation album to be released by The Doors. And the title 13 comes from the fact that there's 13 tracks on the album. 13 was a project thought up by Electra Records who wanted to um, produce a release for the Christmas season. The band reluctantly agreed and Morrison even agreed to shave off his beard for the album cover photo. But Electra opted to use the younger photo of the singer. So that's the doors with 13. Next up we have Emmy Lou Harris, Elite Hotel. This is a 1975 release. And this is on the reprise as I was educated by Mazzy at Norman Maslow on the Reprise label Reprise Records This was Emmylou Harris's first number one country album from it came two number one singles which were Together Again and Sweet Dreams and also One of These Days which is another track made it to number three in the charts there's the reprise label not reprise and it'd be worth remembering as well that next time you go to hire a, a motor vehicle and you go to Enterprise Rent-A-Car just to bear in mind So, Emily Harris Elite Hotel. Next up, Nick Drake. 
five leaves left. In 1969 release on Island Records, but this one is a 1972 pressing, repress, UK repress. And it has the Island Records pink rimmed label. Nick Drake was a British folk singer. Released three albums before he died in 1974 from an overdose of antidepressant medication. Which I don't know if that's what the reason was, but it obviously drove something has driven drove the price of his albums up because this on Discogs is. Quite a valuable record to get fault. And finally, one which I seen recently, I believe it was on Mazzy's channel, Norman Masloff. I remember rightly, and it's Quicksilver, Happy Trails, or Quicksilver Messenger Service, to give them their full, full title. This is a 1969 release on Capitol Records. American psychedelic rock band formed in San Francisco in 1965 it's got the lime green capital label influenced by jazz and classical and a strong folk background helped the band to create an individual innovative sound Happy Trails by Quicksilver Messenger Service was the second album released by the band. Most of the album was recorded from two performances at the Fillmore East and the Fillmore West, but it's not clear which parts were recorded where. And that is it for this episode. So thanks for watching. As I say, I'm sorry that I haven't released any more of the Inheritance Collection for a while. Starting to get back on top of things. Um, still got a couple of good couple of hundred records to work through in the collection, as well as CDs. So um, watch out for the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye.